So, Lucas Papadimos has been tasked with protecting Greece's place in the Eurozone and controlling the country's growing debt problems. The 64-year-old is not a member of any political party or an elected politician, but instead a former vice president of the European Central Bank. He helped guide Greece's introduction into the Euro a decade ago. He now has to draft the 2012 budget in just two weeks. It will need to include painful spending cuts. According to the Greek Finance Ministry, the draft budget needs to go through Parliament by the end of December. Papadimos and his coalition government also need to finalise a deal where banks write off 50% of Greek debts. They'll have to do that before February 19th, the date scheduled for early general elections. Tony Sanwa is a representative of the Socialist Party in Britain and secretary of the Committee for Workers International. Let's get some opinion uh, from him. Tony, a technocrat in charge in Athens then. Mario uh, Monti, another technocrat, the front runner to replace Silvio Berlusconi in Italy. Uh, are we, do you think, setting a dangerous precedent here? Non elected politicians taking charge at times of national crisis? Well, it is really what it is, is a move uh, which is against the democratic interests of the people of those respective countries. In both cases, we see in Greece, for example, uh, Papademos is a, is a banker uh, taking over the running of the country. And of course, we have the same issue posed in Italy with a former member of the European Commission uh, poised to take over. And in both cases, it's te the technocracy representing the interests of the European banks, the European Commission. Uh, taking over the running of government to try and impose these vicious austerity packages. But, but, but Tony, is the electorate capable of understanding all of the complex issues uh, of this crisis and the potential ramifications uh, of their choice at the ballot box? I think they understand very well the ramifications of what these austerity packages mean in terms of the mass unemployment, the vicious attacks on working conditions and living standards which is being imposed on working people throughout Europe. What is the tragedy at the present time and what's needed is while you have complete crisis and chaos at the top uh, caused by a systemic collapse uh, of this capitalist uh, system which is in the process of unfolding, the tragedy is that we need an alternative which will offer a way out of this crisis which is only going to be viable on the basis of the complete fundamental break with the capitalist system, which in my opinion means uh, the emergence of a new democratic socialist alternative but, on an all European basis. But, but surely, left, left to their own devices, wouldn't the electorate of any country experiencing uh, the kind of stiff austerity measures that you're talking about punish their politicians at, at the ballot box? That the, the, the people that you'd get in power are not necessarily the kind of people who are going to sort out this crisis, whatever your politics, wh whether you think staying in the euro and staying part of a united Europe is the way to go or, or what you're suggesting? Well, I mean, I think those in power at the present time, they may well be punished by their electorate. I think they deserve to be punished by their electorates. They're detested by their electorates. What is needed is the emergence of a new political force in most countries, a force that will really represent the interests of ordinary people and not the interests of the technocracy, the European Commission, the bankers and the interests of the major companies which are uh, insisting on these policies of austerity being forced through. Tony, good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed for being with us. Uh, Tony Sunwell there in London.